As you may have heard, Apple will be holding a special event on Tuesday the 8th of March called Peak Performance, where they will potentially be unleashing the new iPhone SE, iPad Air, MacBook Air, iMac and much more. Rather than organising this event in person, Apple is scheduling this event virtually. Moreover, Apple has not disclosed details of the March 8 event, except the time and the date. And as a result, rumours are meandering in different directions. Given the uncertainty of these rumours, we would rely on a more authentic resource like Bloomberg. According to this news outlet, Apple is probably going to launch the cheap and accessible iPhone SE and iPad Air. Also, Bloomberg's reporter Mark Gurman speculates that the new crop of Apple devices will come with new features. In this video, I have gathered information from reliable sources highlighting the Apple devices that could be launched in the upcoming March 8 event. Starting off with a refresh of the iPhone SE line, Apple will most likely launch the iPhone SE 3 with more advanced and sophisticated features. It would be identical to the current iPhone SE and might have the 5G connectivity and a 15 Bionic chip. According to Bloomberg's report, it would be cheaper with faster speed and enhanced camera results. This year's iPhone SE is going to look just like the 2020 iPhone SE with no design changes expected. Apple's current iPhone SE is modelled after the iPhone 8, featuring thick top and bottom bezels, a Touch ID, home button and a 4.7 inch LCD display. The iPhone SE is and will continue to be the only iPhone that Apple offers with Touch ID instead of Face ID and it will be the only iPhone released in 2022 with an older LCD display as Apple has transitioned to OLED for the flagship lineup. Wireless charging will be supported but we're not expecting MagSafe, nor are there likely to be notable changes to battery life. The current iPhone SE is available in black, white and red and we are likely to see similar colour options. With no design changes on the horizon, the updates to the iPhone SE are all internal. We're expecting a faster chip and the iPhone SE could get the same A15 chip that's in the iPhone 13 for a drastic increase in performance. Storage is rumoured to start at 64GB with Apple offering 64, 128 and 256GB options. The other major new features coming to the iPhone SE is 5G connectivity which will put the iPhone SE on par with flagship iPhones when it comes to connection speed. Apple's iPhone SE will be the cheapest 5G iPhone and it is expected to be priced at $399. The only other rumour we've heard about the iPhone SE is a possible updated camera so it could get the latest wide camera from the iPhone 13. It is acceptable that this device is not the most thrilling one in the new crop of Apple devices but it is the best option for the Android switches. However, keep in mind that the exact price, design and augmented features are still a mystery until the final launch of the upcoming March 8 event. New iPhone case colours were leaked on Twitter at the end of February and it is likely that these cases are going to be released during the March 8 event. New colours include a light blue, a darker green blue, an orange shade and a yellow. It is likely we'll see the same colours available for iPad cases and perhaps Apple Watch bands. Apple won't focus on these new cases on stage but we'll see them added to the online store after the event. According to Bloomberg, Apple will launch the iPad Air 5 to replace the current version of the iPad Air. The new version of the iPad Air will comprise of the 5G connectivity, A15 Bionic chip, faster speed and augmented camera. There's a new design of the iPad Air in the works but like the iPhone SE there are no design changes expected. The next generation iPad Air will continue to look like the current iPad Air though there's a possibility we could see new colour options. Right now the iPad Air comes in space grey, silver, rose gold, green and blue. Rumours suggest that much of the iPad Air update will focus on bringing the device in line with the 6th generation iPad mini released last fall so it is expected to get an updated A15 chip which Apple added to the iPad mini after introducing it in the iPhone 13 models. Apple downlocked the A15 chip in the iPad mini so it runs at 2.9GHz instead of 3.2GHz as it does in the iPhone. But it's not clear if the same clock speed will be used for the iPad Air. Either way, the A15 will be an improvement over the A14 chip in the current model. For cellular iPad Air models, Apple will add 5G connectivity so the updated devices will work faster with 5G networks. The chip in the iPad mini is limited to sub 6 GHz 5G networks rather than the fastest millimeter wave 5G networks, so it's possible we could see this limitation in the iPad Air. The iPad Air will feature mostly internal changes but it could get the same updated 12 megapixel ultra wide front camera that will work with center stage, a feature first introduced in the iPad Pro and iPad mini 6. Center stage is a FaceTime feature designed to keep you in focus and perfectly framed when you're on a FaceTime video call. The wide angle front 
front facing camera shows more of the room that you're in, while the processor inside the iPad works to keep you front and centre even as you move around. If more than one person is in the call, the camera will also zoom out to keep everyone in view. The rear camera is expected to continue to feature a single lens setup, though a quad led true tone flash could be added. As for other features, it will continue to use a USB C port, and we're not expecting notable changes to battery life. Pricing on the iPad Air is likely to stay the same, so the new model could be priced starting at $599 for 64GB storage. It's possible that Apple announces a new MacBook Air with a new M2 chip at this event. The current design of the MacBook Air dates back to 2018 and was a testbed for the Apple M1 chip debut in 2020. And as a result, the current MacBook Air with the M1 chip is one of the best laptops you could buy. But it's 2022 now and we have freshly updated MacBook Pro designs with better screens and a better camera that you can expect the MacBook Air will soon follow and who knows it might even come with a notch. Most noteworthy for Apple fans is the MacBook. In the upcoming March event, Apple will most probably launch the new Mac powered by silicon. Also a few rumours have suggested that Apple will introduce an updated version of the 13 inch MacBook Pro at the spring event, but it's not clear if that's accurate as the machine will likely use an updated M2 chip. But other Macs that are also going to adopt the M2 chip like the refreshed MacBook Air it's questionable that Apple would introduce the M2 chip in the 13 inch MacBook Pro at this point, but then again, it is not impossible. Apple in 2020 updated the lower end Mac mini with an M1 chip, and now it's the higher end Mac mini's turn for an update. Rumors suggest that the new machine will be equipped with Apple's M1 Pro and M1 Max chips, with Apple eliminating Intel chips from the Mac mini lineup. The M1 Pro and M1 Max chips feature a 10 core CPU with 8 high power cores and 2 high efficiency cores, though there is also an 8 core version used in the 14 inch MacBook Pro. As for GPU performance, the M1 Pro chip features a 16 core GPU, while the M1 Max features a 32 core GPU. There's also a lower tier 24 core option available as a build to order option, and there's a high chance that these chips may come to the Mac Mini. The M1 chip supports up to 32 GB RAM and the M1 Max supports up to 64 GB, so the new Mac Mini will continue to offer support for up to 64 GB RAM. The M1 version of the Mac Mini is limited to 16 GB RAM. Rumours suggest the Mac Mini is going to get a new look, perhaps with a smaller casing size that has a plexiglass like top and a two tone colour scheme. If Apple is introducing a new colour scheme, the Mac Mini could potentially come in colours other than space grey or silver. Similar to the 24 inch iMac, but updated colours are just speculations at this point. Apple's new Mac Mini is said to be equipped with 4 Thunderbolt ports, 2 USB-A ports, an Ethernet port and an HDMI port, along with the same magnetic charging cable used for the 24 inch iMac. Details are still a mystery and we don't yet have any clear information about upcoming Macs. When it comes to the software updates, Apple has been beta testing iOS 15.4, iPad OS 15.4 and Mac OS Monterey 12.3 since late January. And now the updates are nearly ready to launch. The software may not come out on March 8th, but Apple will likely provide us with launch date information and release candidates could also come following the event. iOS 15.4 could potentially be a huge update that brings support for using Face ID while wearing a mask if you have an iPhone 12 or newer. Plus it introduces new emoji characters, lays the groundwork for tap to pay, adds a Siri voice and improves the anti-stalking functionality of AirTags. Mac OS Monterey 12.3 and iPad OS 15.4 add the long awaited universal control feature that's designed to allow multiple Macs and iPads to be controlled with a single mouse, trackpad and keyboard. And if all these rumours are actually true, then I'm super stoked for the new software updates. There are many more rumours about other devices which are unlikely to show in the first spring event this year. However, later this year, new devices such as MacBook Air, Apple Watches, new iPhone 14 models and Mac Pro desktops can show up. Breaking the boundaries is the habit of Apple manufacturers. That's why we have to wait until the peak performance March 8 event. And on that day, we'll see whether Apple has incorporated augmented features and ideas into the new crop of devices or not. And we have come to the end of the video and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and please do leave any questions you may have in the comments below. And until next time, take care.